Come, little one. Why was I the only one who survived? You must feel no guilt, Sandokan, my boy. Help me, Makassar. You are alive today because the fates have willed it so, and because you have a mission you must accomplish. I want to turn my pain into strength and annihilate Brook. And you will do so, Sandokan, but you must trust in time. Even the darkest night comes to an end with the rising of the sun. Things couldn't have taken a worse turn. Oh, is it really all that serious, Your Excellency? Lady Caradine's dispatch is quite clear. I heard of the fire and explosion at the dam. I shall come to Lamboan in person to discuss the situation. Oh, busybody. When did you say her ship was due in port? On the evening tide, sir. I thought it might be a gracious gesture if I were to meet her at the quayside with an honor guard and give her the old 21-gun salute. You mean we should greet an envoy of the Crown with a fusillade? The guns would be shooting blanks, Your Excellency. The red carpet treatment and all that. Yes, very well, but I like my idea better. A few bullets whistling past her ears might make her more amenable. Just remember, not a word of this to Guilong. I can assure Your Excellency that the lady will get the greeting she deserves. Judging from your attitude, I'd say you're contemplating some new adventure. And since you're the master mind reader, I guess you already know what it's going to be. Uh, unless I'm wrong, you're thinking the moment has come to take back Kiltar. Now that we have the support of the Dyax, we can confront Brook in the open. And finally, I'll be able to settle my score with the man who murdered my family. You can count on me. You know that. <coughs> it's about time we taught Brook and his evil henchmen the lesson that's coming to them. Well, what are your views on the subject, Marianne? Anyone would understand your need to get Kiltar back, but clearly, if you attack the governor of Labuan, you'll be starting a war. But perhaps there's an easier way to do it. What way? Brute force is all Brook respects. If the Queen were informed about my uncle's crimes, I'm sure she'd give Kiltar back to you immediately. As far as the Queen's concerned, I'm only an outlaw. She has to be told. If this wind holds up, we'll drop anchor in Labo and within the hour, milady. If only Her Majesty could see this beautiful sunset. She'd understand why I keep putting up with these trips to Borneo, instead of retiring to my comfortable house in Kensington. I know it's none of my business, milady, but won't retirement be a little too calm for you? You've hit the nail on the head, my dear Captain. In my 40 years as a diplomat, I've had to weather many a storm. Even the safety of these waters is a bit of a bother these days. Ready, men. It's time to show our colors. Are those cannons ready to fire, sailor? All loaded, primed, and ready to fire, Lord Guilong. If the effect is sufficiently impressive, we might get a mention in Lady Caradine's dispatches. Stand by, you tigers! Ship off the port bow, my lady. It's probably that wretched fool, Lord Guilong. He tends to be underfoot every time I come here. She's flag an odd flag with a tiger's head on it. Uh, huh? Gun captains, fire at will! <laughs> What are you waiting for? Return fire! You can't do much damage with only one four pounder, sir! If we keep this up, we'll seek her! The orders were not to- I know! They should have been here by now, curse the fools! Who's firing? I was supposed to take care of the salute! Sandokan! We can't take care of him by ourselves. We'll have to head straight back to port and get reinforcements! But your lordship, we can't leave Lady Caradine to the mercy of those bandits! Uh, no. Uh. Ah, 
Finally, not a moment too soon. The ship flying the Union Jack is coming to our aid. We're saved, Lady Carina. <laughs> I am most astounded. Ah, uh, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset her. Uh... You are splendid. I shall mention your bravery to Her Majesty. Do you really mean that? Hmm. Now, who was that pirate who almost killed us? His name is Sandokan, my lady, a fierce bandit who infests our seas. These are the Crown Seas, young man, and that criminal will have to answer to me. Someone important must have arrived in Labuan. That was a 17-gun salute, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not so sure, Sam Big Leong. It sounded more like a real exchange of cannon fire. Well, let's see what the Zook has to say. <laughs> it's showing violet, Yannitz. That means deceit or treachery. Maybe something funny is going on, little brother. Look, there's a ship making for the coast as fast as she can. Yes, they're in quite a hurry. They've got something to hide. Huh? That's what the Zook was talking about. She's got a tiger painted on her hull. We've got to catch up with her! Lord Book will be pleased. Not even Sandakan himself could have done as well. What's that? Fire at will! They mustn't get away! Have your weapons ready, Tigers! Prepare to board! Tigers of Bumpersem, show them who you are! Hey, that's a lizard on your shoulder. Just a second. If you want to play the tiger, the tiger will play with you. Send a can I... What's the reason for this squalid masquerade? Why are you so angry? We made you look good back there. Who's aboard the frigate you and your men were pretending to attack disguised as us, you dog? Who's paying you? It was Governor Brooks doing. James Brooke, what's that scoundrel up to now? A nice cup of tea is just the thing after that dreadfully unsettling experience you were forced to undergo this evening, Lady Caradine. I hope you're feeling better. Yes, thank you. If my men hadn't arrived in time, I shudder to think of the consequences. I appreciate your concern, Governor Brook. It's not possible. Sandokan would do anything to avoid hurting a woman. If you'll just sign this document, we can put a stop to him forever. If London sends reinforcements, we've got him. Hmm. Hmm. I see your solution is more violence. It's the only thing wretches like him understand, my lady. Oh, 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 I'm so terribly sorry, my lady. Forgive me. You clumsy old idiot. Governor Brooke, I beg you to moderate your language. You can have another copy of the document written out and I can sign it tomorrow morning. Good night. And tomorrow you will indeed sign it, you old witch. It was a ruse to make Lady Caradine think we were the bloodthirsty bandits who attacked her ship. We would be in great trouble if the Crown should decide to support Brooke against us. We should march to Labwin and cook his goose once and for all. <sighs> if only we could persuade Lady Caradine to come to Montpressant and see how things really are, she'd feel differently. After what Brooks told her, I doubt she'd accept an invitation to this pirate's lair. Well, maybe I'm not so terribly bright, but I can think of a good way of getting her to come here. Huh? Come in. How are you this morning, my lady? Oh, I'm over my fright, thank you, Nanny. Why have I not seen Marianne yet? Is she not in residence at this time? Miss Marianne no longer lives in the palace, my lady. Let me guess, she's fallen in love. Who's the lucky man who's managed to snare such a sensitive heart? Hasn't the governor told you? I haven't heard a word about it. Stupid, meddlesome old fool. The man she's fallen in love with is none other than Sandukan, my lady. What nonsense are you spouting, <gasps> Nanny? He isn't the bandit they say he is. He's a loyal and courageous young That'll man. That'll be enough, Nanny. Out uh, you go. Uh, oh. 
You must excuse the poor thing, Lady Caradine. She's grown a bit addled in her old age. That vile monster has kidnapped my niece, I'll have you know. Oh, dear Lord in heaven, how dreadful! Well, we'll have the power to do something about it as soon as you've signed that document. You are to remain in the scullery until Lady Caradine leaves. Thanks to you, we'll eliminate Sandokan once and for all. What about Marianne? Can't intend to put your niece's life in danger. Marianne's life is already in danger, if indeed she is still alive. <sighs> How are you coming along with that new copy, Guilang? Almost finished? Very nearly, Your Excellency. supposed to be here. Brooke has kept him up in the fortress all night. It seems he has to copy out a document that's proof against Sandakan that the governor wants to get Lady Caradine to sign. Oh, he's even slower with a pen than he is with a sword. It's up to you now, Camelmarie. Get into that basket of mangoes and let them take you up to the palace. You know what you have to do when you get there. So far, so good. What in the world is wrong with this basket of mangoes? <sighs> Now listen, Nanny. We know everything, but we need your help. We can't pull this off without you. Here's what you have to do, and the sooner the better. Oh, how wonderful. But will it work? Thank goodness it's done. I was running out of paper. Sergeant Conklin is waiting with the clerk to take you to the palace, sir. Uh, please tell him I'll be along immediately, Corporal. Let's get going. Yes, my lord. Right away. The governor will be delighted with my work. Yes, you can bet on that. The copy is ready, governor. And about time, too. Here you are, my lady. Please accept my apologies for the delay. I must have forgotten my spectacles in my room. But you read it through just last evening. I beg you, Lady Caradine, please just think of Marianne and sign the document. This is the end of that blackguard Sandokan. I'm very tired, Lord Brooke, and I'd like to go to bed immediately. Tomorrow I sail for Hong Kong. Very well, milady. Your ship has been prepared, and I will personally escort you some miles out to sea in order to protect you. As you wish, Governor. What about the medal I was supposed to get? As far as I know, they haven't yet coined a medal for stupidity. Uh. I have your evening cup of tea, my lady. Well, actually, I didn't ask for any tea. Nanny had it sent up. She thought it would help you sleep, my lady. Oh, very sweet. Please thank her for me. This is a very unusual blend. How interesting. <laughs> Halt and identify yourself. Conklin, I have a little present from Sergeant Devereux up at the fortress. Devereux? The new supply sergeant. He knew I was coming up here for Lord Guilong, so he sent along a couple of his friends to keep you company. This new supply sergeant's definitely afraid to be cultivated. <laughs> Let's go! In back there, Karamori. 
All present and accounted for, sir. Mind you don't mess up that hat. She's going to need it. This is the first time I've ever picked up a royal envoy. She's in <coughs> for quite a surprise when she wakes up. Yes, and Governor Brooks in for a double surprise. By the power vested in me by Her Majesty Queen Victoria, I hereby authorize that pompous windbag James Brooke to receive 50 lashes on the seat of his her. That cretin Guilank, no punishment is severe enough for his abysmal idiocy. I'll have him hanged, drawn, and quartered. Gave him specific instructions to stay away from her. And so you gave me a sleeping draught and kidnapped me. We had to warn you about my uncle's treachery somehow, and the only way we could get you to listen to us was to bring you here in person. Your own secret island, your own paradise. Well, let's get on with it and meet this infamous tiger of yours. <laughs> I apologize sincerely for having abducted you, my lady, but I could think of no other way. I hope you will return to Montpersem many times of your own free will. The affection I have always felt for Marianne helps me accept your apology, and I will listen to what you have to say, on condition that that horrible beast is kept far away. Come on, Paco, don't take it personally. And if Brooke had not set fire to Hirundo's village, there'd have been no reason to blow up the dam. If that is truly the way things are, I will speak to the Dyer chief and clear up the situation. You have my word. What still eludes me, however, is why he is so obsessed with you, young man. Because I am the son of the Raja of Kiltar, your ladyship. I thought the Raja and his family died when his palace was burned. All but one, Lady Caradine. I was taken to Singapore by a faithful servant, and I grew up knowing nothing about my past. It wasn't until I arrived in Labuan that I learned the full truth about my family. And what is this full truth? My father was killed by Dyax, rebelling against his government. The murder was ordered by the man who wanted to gain control of Kiltar's diamond mines. And that man is His Excellency Governor James Brook. I must confess, I am shocked and appalled. An official of the Crown ordering a murder. This is a very serious accusation, and the mines of Kiltar are worked out. That's what he's led you to believe, Lady Caradine, by doctoring and falsifying the records. But I am positive that in his office, there's ample proof that what I'm saying is the truth. Hmm. You must rescue Lady Caradine immediately and bring her back here, together with the perpetrator of this evil crime. I'll attend to the matter at once, Your Lordship. Greenunk, you have something more urgent to do at the moment. Uh, eat this. Oh. I'm sorry to leave your lovely island so soon for many reasons, Sandro Khan, including your superlative cuisine. Sam Bigliang's an artist with his skillet. How dare he sail right into port as bold as brass? Flying the tiger flag as well. I'm all cannon ready to fire as soon as he's in range. Wait for my signal. But we can't possibly open fire, my lord. What are you talking about? Look for yourself. Ah, what the devil is going on? As soon as Lady Caradine has disembarked, arrest Sandokan and sink his ship. You will arrest no one at all, Governor James Brock. Huh? You will do exactly as I order you. Will you take the word of a bandit over that of a... Over that of a liar, I will take the word of he who tells the truth. Mm. And who has proof to offer. <gasps> hmm. But your ladyship, you've already been through my books, don't you remember? You found everything quite in order. Not this book, Governor. I promise you I will have it sent to London to be checked out, Your Ladyship. 
No, Lord Brooke. I shall personally place these documents into the hands of our beloved Queen, and if any irregularities regarding the death of the Rajah of Kildar should be found in them, she will doubtless authorise that proper measures be taken. And since we would be in the area of high crime, we need not dwell on the consequences. In the meantime, you will sign this document, by which you forswear taking any action against Sandokan and his friends without my express permission. Don't think that this is the end of it, Sandokan. The end will come only when you're swinging from a gibbet. And your eyes are being pecked out by the crows. Nelly! Oh, child. I'm sure the Queen will assign maximum importance to the question, Sandokan. She is a just and fair woman. Those who have done wrong will pay for their misdeeds. I thank you more than I can say, Lady Caradine. I had lost my faith in justice, but now, thanks to you, I've found it again. It has been a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr. Sambiglion. It was an unforgettable honor for me, milady. Well, my dear, I certainly have no difficulty in understanding how you happen to take up with him. He is, by all odds, the most fascinating man I have ever met. Let me go after that braggart, Your Excellency. I'll solve the problem once and for all. The important thing is to recover those letters. Revenge will be all the sweeter if put off for a while. <laughs>